Friends, this is Simarjeet Singh, live to you from our virtual studio. And this video is about three things. Excelling at virtual interviews, laying the foundation of a strong career in a VUCA world, in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. And number three, the mindset principles that you need uh, in order to succeed in this changing dynamic environment. It's been a tough uh, time for everybody, you know, during this COVID pandemic. And um, everybody was thrust into changes and transformations that we never thought we'd be seeing in our lifetimes. But I choose to take an empowering view of what we've been through. And I also choose to take an empowering perspective of what lies ahead of us. And I say to you, welcome to a world full of possibilities, right? I think Ale Alexander Graham Bell um, once said, uh, when one door closes, a hundred others open. The problem is we continue to focus on the one door that has closed and we don't look at the hundred other doors that have opened. So I understand we've all been through challenges, including yours sincerely. I've been through a lot of challenges, a lot of changes happening in my line of work as well. And a lot of the old doors were shut during this time, but also something very interesting happened. Many new doors opened, just like these virtual interactions, virtual interviews, virtual keynotes, so many other exciting things that we were able to do, which perhaps we did not have the wherewithal, the skills, all the resources, earlier. So I say again, welcome to a world full of possibilities. And yes, we all had to face the um, um, challenges that COVID pandemic brought uh, to us. So I went from going uh, from live on stages with large audiences, interacting with them, mingling with them, to sitting in front of these studio lights and sitting in front of my camera and uh, delivering virtual keynotes for our clients across the world, you know, doing Facebook lives, YouTube lives, creating so much, so much content over the last two years that we did not uh, so if, if the content that we've created in the last two years is more than what we were able to create in the last 12 years you now you look at that so that's what i call take taking a more empowering perspective on what's happening right now dr van dyer used to say when you change the way you look at things the things you're looking at begin to change when you change the way you look at things the things you're looking at begin to change. So when you start looking at the world and the new economy and what's going on right now from a positive perspective, of course, you're going to find a world full of possibilities. So when, but if you're going to look, uh, if you're going to be too attached with the way things were, and if you're going to be complaining about, you know, losing touch or losing your old way of doing things, um, the results are not going to be very pleasing. So when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. And I hope you take an empowering perspective uh, as far as your career and employment opportunities are concerned. This piece of research is coming from the McKinsey Global Institute, which says remote work will also put a dent in business travel. So business travel is going to go down because a lot of it was, let's face it, unnecessary, <laughs> right? And so now people and corporations have discovered the effectiveness of video meetings. You know, people have all these tools they've been, they're used to and they're comfortable with these tools. Uh, so what, virtual interviews are also not new. Video interviews have been around for a very long time. But what you will feel is that many employers are embracing the sheer convenience and the um, also the effectiveness of these tools so they they're here to stay they're here to stay so let me um, capture a few points of how technology is going to impact your careers not, not only your interviews and and uh, but also beyond right so not just getting into the workforce but also what you do beyond number one digital transformations have been accelerated people who never used technology in their entire lives before and now suddenly become comfortable with digital tools. E-commerce went up, sh went through the roof, you know, online shopping. So many people discovered millions across the world were first time e-commerce customers during the pandemic. Um, same applies with video conferencing tools and uh, meeting tools like Microsoft Teams or Zoom and all these other things. These were earlier restricted to a niche, to a small segment but now they have uh, they, they're they're in you know common use right now you know everybody's aware of how these tools work right from young kids in schools to um, chief executives of different corporations now we live in a market economy and two things about the market economy number one skills which are rare will be highly paid so if you are someone who has special skills which are rare you can expect to be back in the workforce quickly and also to 
command a higher salary as compared to other people. But now the second thing about the market economy is the market economy loves convenience. Okay. And that's why disruptors such as um, taxi aggregators or food delivery apps or so many other technology enabled disruptors have done so well is just because consumers love convenience. You may not think about this. If you have a craving for a certain kind of food and before all these food delivery apps were here, you had to either physically drive there or call their delivery services, which were always not very efficient. Now it's all become integrated into your app and you have so many coupons and so many discounts available. Um, there is convenience. The market economy loves convenience and virtual interviews are convenient. So they're here to stay. So if you're a youngster who's in college or university right now, and if you're not equipped, if you're not putting your best foot forward, should I say best foot forward or best face forward? <laughs> you're not entering a door anymore. Um, but if you're not putting your best forward for your virtual interview right now, chances are your profile may not stand out among several others. So this is no longer a luxury. It's become a necessity that you must master. The next point is adaptability, my friends, is a new superpower. Adaptability is the new superpower. In fact, this is so important. I want you to type this in in the comment section right now. Adaptability is the new superpower. I'm reminded of uh, Professor Stephen Hawking who said um, intelligence is, is, uh, has little to do with your academic credentials, your marks and which university you went to has more to do with your ability to adapt to change. Right. So your intelligence in this changing world has more to do with your ability to adapt to change. And only those who focus on learning, unlearning and relearning will thrive. Only those who question themselves, what are the new skills I need to acquire in order to succeed in this economy will survive. Only those who will unlearn the old things which are no longer relevant will survive and thrive. And only those who have a strong grasp on the core concepts of their domain the ones who are relearning the core concepts and are in touch with the core concepts, those are the ones who would uh, thrive in this changing environment. So that's sort of a, a bird's eye view of the changes that are happening. I want to take you through five very important um, segments, let's call them. Five, I've, I've segmented some information uh, into five categories and this is how we'll proceed. We'll go with the urgent stuff first and then we'll move to the important ones. So um, I'll go in the sequence of that if we so I'll go with basic housekeeping and what sort of technology you need. And then we'll move on to other important things such as your communication skills and your mindset, etc. But if your tech fails on the day of your interview, if you have a if you have not done your homework, if those sort of things are, have, haven't been done properly, then it would make little difference if you're a good communicator, etc. Because you won't have the option to showcase all that. So let's begin with this stuff that is really urgent and you must look after this. And this is, so I'm going in a reverse sequence. My point number five is my point number one, okay? <laughs> so let's begin with number five. Check your tech. If you're appearing for a virtual interview, check your tech. Don't take any chances at all. Expect the best, but be prepared for the worst. That's my mantra here. As Murphy's Law goes something like this, what can go wrong will go wrong. So you got to make sure that you have backup arrangements and you've checked everything properly. Um, walk in with the mindset of somebody who's expecting everything to go well, but who's also prepared with backups in case things go wrong, in case power disruptions happen, in case your internet connectivity is not good. Now, we did a survey asking people what are their top concerns when it comes to virtual interviews. And the uh, top two or three reasons that come to my mind, number one was, I'm not comfortable in front of the camera. I fear I will have network issues. I fear we'll have poor audiovisual quality. I fear I will not be able to see the reactions of the interviewer. And I fear that I will not be in the right frame of mind because I'm in my familiar zone and sitting in my home. So I will not be, be able to give my best the same way I would be giving my best if I would be actually walking into the office of that corporation. So these were some of the concerns, but the interesting thing is all of these concerns can be addressed by proper preparation. Let's talk about your audio visual first. And remember this, my friends, there is no theoretical way to check 
whether your audio visual is working well or not. Okay, so understand this, um, please, that the best way to check the quality of your audio visual is what the other person is receiving. And the best way to test what the other person is receiving is this. Get a friend or a colleague or a family member to set up a Zoom meeting, right, or Microsoft Team meeting or whatever software that you're using on that day and do and record yourself sitting in the same place using the same infrastructure using the same lighting the same mic etc uh, and and then go and hear yourself go and check that audio visual quality which has been received on the other side okay and that is the best and the foolproof way of ensuring that your technology is uh, delivering right that it's enabling you to put your best forward Camera placement, really important. Uh, some people, when they're using webcams, they have it really at a low level. So all you're getting is a focus of the nostrils. You don't want that. It's not <laughs> the nostril cam is what I call it. Um, mic and proximity effect. There is something called the proximity effect when it comes to using mics and which very simply put is this. The closer you are to the mic, the better quality that you get. The further away you are, uh, the quality drops because that's how mics function. I would suggest, um, I'm, you know, I'm sure for a virtual interview, interview, you are not using something as complicated uh, or as high end as the SM7B sure right now. But even if you use a decent lapel mic, your, the quality of your audio will improve vastly. So consider investing in a lapel mic because it will improve the audio quality. Also, uh, take a look at the acoustics of the room. You know, is there a lot of um, uh, is there a lot of upholstery in the room? Is there a carpet in the room? Because bare walls and bare floors, um, they're going to give you a lot of reverb in the sound, and that's not going to sound very nice uh, on the other side. So choose a room which has a lot of fabric or upholstery or carpets, and you'll get a decent acoustic environment. Of course, away from outside sound, that goes without saying. Um, and when it comes to getting the best out of your camera, I think lighting has a huge role to play. So either use daylight if you can, which is a great source. Just make sure you're not overexposed. Uh, you're not sitting in direct sunlight or something. But uh, otherwise, you can always buy or hire for the day LED lights in your city, right? Get a freelance photographer to come in for the day if it's a really important virtual interview and, you know, ask that person how much he's going to charge for, uh, just to set up a few LED lights for you and help you with the equipment. That way you are delegating the, uh, the technical aspect of it to an expert and you can be free to focus on what is the most important for you. Now, another very important aspect is your upload speeds. Uh, when it comes to virtual interviews, uh, two or three things as far as the internet connectivity is concerned. People just look at their download speed on the connection and say, fine, you know, that looks great. I'm getting 50 megabytes per second or 100 megabytes per second, and that's pretty good. Uh, of course, it's good for decent for downloading, but in a virtual interview, if you're using an HD camera or, an, or a decent quality microphone, in any case, it's your upload speed that matters more than your download speed. So check the upload speed and get onto a network which is offering you better upload speed and have a separate internet connection, a backup internet connection, whether it's through a mobile device um, or through any other ways, whether it's two connections in the same home or whatever uh, ways you can show that if your main internet connection is not functioning properly, you have a backup arrangement to go to. Sit close to the modem, um, you know, don't sit in the way, too far away from where your Wi-Fi modem is placed because the signal quality drops, even if you might be getting a full signal in the other room, but the signal quality will drop. It will not be a good quality signal and therefore it will affect how your video and sound are going towards the other side. Side. Um, so that that was uh, regarding upload speeds. Use LAN cables where possible. If your system has a LAN cable option, if your modem has a LAN cable, and if you're able to plug in a, a LAN actual Ethernet cable, the connection will be far more reliable than using Wi-Fi. 
common sense basic housekeeping tips here close additional apps on your device not only are they distracting but they will also consume system memory and system resources which you don't want when you are streaming um, or appearing for an important virtual interview keep tested backup arrangements handy and ask for help a lot of people don't ask for help they try to be the superhero trying to juggle all between all of these things and single-handedly and then they end up with a situation where they panic because they have too much too much on their plate no you want to focus Focus on having a good conversation with your uh, future employer so that you they're able to know uh, about you and you're able to present your best to them uh, so it's very important that you get help that you ask for help from friends or family or whoever could be your assistant for the day uh, disconnect additional devices from the Wi-Fi. Make sure you go to every TV screen, every device in the house. And if they're logged on and onto the same network, just make sure you log, you're log. you logging everybody off. You don't want people streaming Netflix in high resolution while you're appearing for a virtual interview. That's going to slow the system down. Now, with, with regards to technology, and I've spent the last few minutes talking about it, this is my closing remark about your tech homework, about your check your tech. Invest, but don't obsess, okay? Pay attention to this do your best get the resources delegate spend your money do whatever you have to but don't obsess about it they're not hiring your virtual setup they are hiring you technology is an enabler it's not a substitute they want to know more about you they want to hire you your services your expertise your experience your qualification your skills your mindset they're not hiring your mic your lights your background your home all of that is irrelevant in the long run but it's very important in the decision making right because if you're someone who comes across as sloppy or not tech friendly or not an individual who pays attention to detail, um, that won't go in your favor, right? So invest, but don't obsess. Remember, technology is an enabler. It's not a substitute for you. You, uh, as Rumi said, are the honored guest, <laughs> right? Let's move forward after checking your tech. So counting down from five to four, my number four is do your homework. Again, this is basic common sense, but a lot of people scare it let me tell you what i mean by it think about the what the when the where the why the whom when is my interview what is it about where will i sit and you know have this virtual interaction why am i even applying for this job or why am i even applying to this company uh, who is going to be interviewing me don't start stalking them yet don't tell them i know you were in miami or in goa last week no that's creepy <laughs> don't do that but if you're able to do a little bit of background research or maybe a LinkedIn profile check of the person who's going to be interviewing you, that's great. So when it comes to background research, it's common sense that you would be studying about the company, its culture, its values, its its journey and your profile and the job description. But also you do, this is a great opportunity to do a little bit more background research about yourself. Who am I? What problem solving skills do I bring to the table? And I specifically say problem solving skills because that's what every in interview is all about, right? You're there to solve a problem, right? Every job is about solving problems, right? A surgeon is solving a problem, right? Um, a delivery person is solving a problem. So the more, so take this as an opportunity to do some background research about yourself as well. Who am I? What skills do I bring to the table? What have I been through? What's my story? How do my uh, values align with the corporation's values, right? What's common ground here? Um, and that will help you be more prepared. Now, as far as your preparation, your homework goes, there is nothing that beats a checklist, okay? A checklist. Don't tr rely on memory. Rely on systems and processes and a checklist, a simple checklist. You don't have to create something complicated in Excel. Just take a, a, four, a small piece of paper, something like this, and put down, got to check the internet connection. Well, I want to ensure uh, nobody else is using the Wi-Fi or all the other things that we talked about. Put them down on a piece of paper and make sure you go through this checklist on your important day because if you're overloading your brain with housekeeping things, you're not going to be um, relaxed enough to present your very best during the interview. Confidence, and I'm sure everybody who's listening to this video right now would want to be more confident in virtual interactions and social interactions. Confidence is an outcome, my friends. That's what it is. Confidence is an outcome of preparation and hard work. 
confidence is that feeling that you're able to experience once you know that you've done your hard work and you've put in the efforts to ensure that nothing, whatever goes wrong, I'm still prepared for it. That's confidence, okay? So if you want to feel confident on that day, make sure that you have done the homework, that you are prepared. And when, when you're prepared, your mind automatically goes into We'll see what happens. Let's move forward with it. All right. And a great tool as far as preparing your answers for virtual interviews is concerned uh, is mind maps. This is a great tool. Mind maps are a great tool. And uh, we don't have enough time to go through what mind mapping is in this video. I'm sure there's plenty of other good videos on YouTube to help you. How I use it, I simplify. I take an A4 sheet of paper. I put my main thing in the middle. And then I draw little visual representations of, you know, what are the possible directions I can take that conversation in? What are the possible answers I can give when this question comes up? So let's say, tell us about yourself. So I'm going to take a sheet of paper. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Tell us about yourself, about me. And then I could have a little thing about my hobbies, a little picture or image or text about my previous experience, about my college or my university education, about my vision for the future, about my values and what sort of an individual I am, about the people who have influenced my life, about my role models. So I've got more than enough to talk about when that question comes up, tell us about yourself. And that's what mind maps, uh, um, they enable you to do is that you don't have to memorize answers. And please don't memorize answers because then you're going to sound like a automated voice response system that a lot of banks and other in, uh, organizations use these days. And it's so frustrating if you ever tried, <laughs> you know, calling one of those banks and all you get is an automated voice a pre-recorded voice message and it can really get on your nerves because um, you want to talk to a real human being. Therefore, in your interviews, you want to sound like a real human being. So please, no scripted, memorized answers, right? They, the interviewer has been doing this for a really long time and is doing, he or she is doing it all day long. So they, they are going to find out it's not going to come across spontaneous and natural and you don't want to do this. The next point in doing your homework is about problem solving scenarios. The question is very common, comes up very often, and I think you should have a strong grasp on it. What were the major problems that you solved in your last job? Or tell us about a situation where you were stuck, uh, where you had a customer problem or you had a uh, team member problem or et cetera, et cetera. How did you handle it? What are your takeaways? Every job is about problem solving in the end. Every employer wants to know your problem solving skills. The bigger problems that you can solve, the more money that you can earn in the market economy. They would want to know how good you are at problem solving. So keep a few problem solving scenarios handy, especially in the form of a mind map. Be brief and concise. This is what the problem was. This is what I did to solve it. These are my major takeaways. And this is what I learned in the process that I can apply in future situations. One again, um, the next one is a basic uh, housekeeping thing is about, but often overlooked, is not getting enough sleep before your virtual interview or um, an important virtual conversation that's happening because you're so excited or you left your preparation um, to the last minute or you left, uh, you did not follow my advice on following a checklist or, you know, checking your tech as the, my previous point said, check your tech, all the things about audiovisual and everything. If you, if you left it for the last moment, chances are um, you, you won't sleep very well um, and you don't want that because you, you sleep enables your brain cells to rejuvenate and you know it's for you to be more creative for you to be in a better mood the next day you want to get your good seven eight hours of sleep um, and therefore it's important that you keep that in your priority list so ladies and gentlemen that was number four segment number four number five was Let's 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 do a quick recap. Number five was about checking your tech, right? Which is basic housekeeping as far as technology is concerned. Number four is about a deeper, you know, homework about background research about yourself, about your employer, using checklists, mind maps, problem solving scenarios, and looking after the state of your body through proper food, nutrition, uh, hydration, and sleep. And the next one is about inner work. Now we're moving, I said we'll move from the urgent to the important. This is the important stuff. It might not be urgent, but it is very important. Segment number three is 
inner work before outer results. In fact, this is so important that I want you to type it in the comment section. I will do the inner work first before I expect outer results. I repeat, I will commit to doing the inner work first before I expect outer results. Everybody loves outer results, outer manifestations of success. Very few are able to put in the inner work that is required in order to be in that state of mind to deliver those out of results. And remember, state of mind is everything. Companies hire for mindset, for attitude and culture these days, and they train you on the skill set. It is a given that you will come in with a certain level of expertise, you will come in with a certain level of uh, skills required for the job, and then every organization is going to retrain you a little bit on the skills, but they want to make sure at the outset, right from the start, whether or not you're a good fit for that company's culture, for their values and for their team, etc. And this is going to be very important. Therefore, along with your academic qualifications, along with your experience and achievements in your previous jobs, etc., etc., it's important that you work on your mindset also. And I've always believed mindset is sometimes more important than skill set because I personally know a lot of people who have the skill set, but they don't have the right mindset. So they're not able to use that skill set. I also know, know a lot of people who don't have the skill set yet, but they've got the right mindset and they're acquiring the skill set in the process. One of the most powerful tools in, um, you know, as far as inner work is concerned is visualization. And I would strongly recommend, we'll share the link with you uh, in the up on the this side here um, is I want you to watch that video uh, which is Michael Phelps and his coach talking about visualization and Michael Phelps one of the most decorated Olymp Olympic athlete who has some say his his the total number of medals that he has is probably greater than so if the medal tally of so many countries okay this man has been a medal winning machine and he is a huge um, follower and advocate of uh, visualization. And I want you to watch those videos, but I'll briefly tell you his main approach to visualization, which is he visualizes the ideal scenario, how he would like things to be. He visualizes well, if things go wrong, what is his backup plan so that his mind is fully ready to handle whatever comes his way. I do recommend that you watch those videos. I also highly recommend that you spend time visualizing, do, doing a visual mental rehearsal of your interview. And how it works is to detach yourself, is to look at yourself um, appearing for that virtual interview, right? And to see yourself from a distance and to just take a deep breath and inhale and uh, exhale as your body relaxes and to just uh, end up with this feeling that everything is working very well. So you could probably recap some of those mind maps, some of those answers in your mind. You could see yourself smiling, having a natural, spontaneous, open, creative um, conversation with the interviewer. Um, you could visualize yourself um, that your camera and your other things and your lighting and the internet and everything is working fine and then just be in that state of mind and uh, so it really helps so it's nothing new for you your brain is exper has experienced it you could also and this is what Michael Phelps uh, uses is you could also visualize if something goes wrong how quickly are you able to bounce back and what is your backup in that situation so I think this this is really important the next thing that I want to come on to in inner work before outer results is using neuro associative conditioning. Here's what it means. You all must have a song that when you listen to it, you feel good about, you know, you, you're instantly in a good mood. You've listened to that song over and over again. And now your brain has made a connection whenever that song plays, boom, you're in a good mood. So that's neuro associative conditioning. You all must have a perfume. Uh, I have a few that I've always worn on stage before uh, I go for an in-person presentation. I used to go for an in-person presentation. And when I put on the same perfume for my virtual presentations now, my mind is instantly in the same you know, presentation mode. So that perfume really helps <laughs> as um, funny as it sounds, but this stuff works. So wear your favorite suit or your favorite attire, whatever happens to be, wear your lucky watch or your the, this, the fragrance that you like, these small things 
enable you to be in the right mindset. And no, I'm not wearing shorts underneath the suit, <laughs> you know, Dre clothes for me, the right grooming for me is not about how I appear to other people. It's all about my state of mind. So if I feel comfortable in wearing shorts, I do that. But if I am wearing shorts and uh, I don't feel that uh, I'm not getting the me feeling, it's, I'm not me yet without that thing. So don't dr drop the standards. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Don't just because it's a virtual interview, please don't s drop the standards of your grooming and other things because uh, it's going to affect your state of mind and you don't want that to happen. Um, so therefore, it's important. This was number three, ladies and gentlemen, inner work before outer results. Let's do a quick recap. Start by checking your tech, the most urgent stuff here. If this goes wrong, everything else flops. Move on to doing a deeper homework about yourself, about your skills, about your profile, about the company that, that you want to be a part of. Use mind maps, uh, have problem solving scenarios handy, uh, sleep and other sort of things. Um, your basic um, looking after your body, your diet, your nutrition, and then inner work through visualization uh, by maintaining high standards of grooming by being fully ready mentally, physically for your um, interactive experience, for your online experience, and also using this time, the preparation time for interviews to develop the right mindset. That's what I mean by inner work before outer results. Let's move on to segment number two now, which is about communication skills, right? As I said, the stuff is not urgent, but it's very important, deeply important. Work on your communication skills 2.0. You see, communication the skills old-fashioned was how my, how is my handshake, right? A lot of folks do get rejected because of a bad handshake or a bad posture when they enter the room or so many other things. And now it's all changed. Now it's changed to communication skills 2.0, right? Which is, are you able to look at the camera lens and the zoom window and all the other technology and the distractions that might be there in the background and still keep eye contact, still have a meaningful conversation. Those are communication skills 2.0, right? Your ability to multitask, your ability to look at the camera. Now, here's the thing. If I would be having a zoom meeting right now, I would have another zoom window open, which is on my monitor down here. And if I'm looking at the person when I'm speaking, I won't be making eye contact. I think I'm making eye contact with him, but I'm breaking eye contact. So what I need to do is to train my mind and is to do enough number of um, demo tests or mock interviews or whatever it happens to be to look directly into the camera lens, right? Maybe put a little sticky note up there, do whatever you have to train yourself to maybe get audio feedback from the person using a headphones, which I'm not using right now because this is not an interactive thing. It's a, it's a recording. But if it were a live interview, I would be wearing headphones where I can hear the other person. But to, when I'm speaking to the other person to give them direct eye contact, I would be looking straight into the camera lens. Okay, And that's really important in order to keep that conversation going. Keep in mind, please, you're communicating at a visual, auditory, and verbal level. Everything is important. Your sound is very important. As I said, using the right mic, using the right acoustic environment, um, and using the proximity effect to your advantage. These are small things to ensure your voice, as per the, some research is, uh, is around 37% uh, is about how you say it, how it's sounding when you're saying it. 55% is visual, what the other person is seeing. Words are only 7 to 8%. This is what the old, the Merabian research model is about. Um, but I would still sometimes put voice mo even more than video, even more than visual, because even if you have some video transmission issues, let's say you have a frozen screen, and everybody had, you know, can, nobody's an exception. I was on a conference the other day, the Fast Company Innovation Festival. Drew Barrymore was one of their keynote speakers, and she had uh, some issues with the camera. Camera. There was a, a, a lag, uh, frozen screen, a couple of times, etc., etc. So even Hollywood celebrities are also not an exception to this. But um, that apart, you need to keep in mind that even if there be, there are some issues with uh, video transmission, if your sound quality is good, you're still able to retain the attention of the other person. So. Keep in mind, you're communicating at three levels, visual, auditory, and verbal. Of course, you've done the uh, work as far as a verbal level is concerned. You've prepared your answers. You've looked at your mind maps. You probably have a good idea of the job description, etc., etc. But now it's important as the visual. 
what the other person is seeing is are you giving eye contact or not and also uh, what the other person is hearing right so uh, keep these things in mind positive posture and facial language i can't even say body language for uh, virtual interviews because uh, the camera is not covering your entire body but so but it is covering the upper half so a good posture would be very important so take a look at this 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 is an upright posture and this is slouching and you know it, it's going to make an impact uh, after a period of time to your energy level as well as how you're appearing to the other person so posture uh, really important and once again the, what i told you uh, right in the in the beginning about um, doing test runs with friends uh, again this comes in very handy to see um, what your posture looks like on the recording and also um, whether you're able to make eye contact if you're smiling enough or not how do you sound etc you cannot academic uh, sorry you cannot theoretically solve this problem you'll have to do a few practical demos to find out so positive posture facial language very important and friends be prepared to speak to a black box this is what i mean is you could have a certain situation where your interviewer is not able to switch on her camera and all you have in front of you on a zoom or microsoft team meeting is a black box with the name displayed on it uh, your video is still on they perhaps might still expect you to keep your video on it should not make a difference train your brain with sufficient practice sessions that that thing doesn't put you off i know you'll be missing the human to human interaction because the camera is not on but you got to proceed anyway this might even be a test for some of you uh, so keep that in mind please that was that was uh, segment number 2 before i move to the last one um, segment number 2 was working on your communication skills 2.0 let me share a quotation by jim rohn jim rohn on developing your communication skills he said take advantage of every opportunity to practice your communication skills so that when important occasions arise you will have the gift the style the sharpness the clarity and the emotions to affect other people i love this i think it's worth repeating take advantage of every opportunity to practice and hone and refine your communication skills so that when the important occasion arises as in your case a virtual interview you will have the gift the style the sharpness the clarity and the emotions to make a positive impact on other people so uh, let this happen simultaneously while you are appearing for job interviews and uh, the the final thing the one of my most important um, takeaways in getting ready for this changing dynamic bold new world out there is to embrace technology whether you i don't care you're in healthcare you're in sales and marketing um regardless you're a freelancer you're graphic designer what whatever happens to be your um, be your calling be your career at the moment it's important that you fully embrace technology that you're able to incorporate not just existing technologies but also new technologies that are that might be the new tools new softwares that might be available in your field um and the world is changing very very quickly it's not an option to say oh, i'm not tech friendly uh, anymore um so and again this this will benefit you because i believe once our neurons are stretched by new challenges and by new tasks um they never go back to the old thing so you are a brand new you with better skills you th- your virtual interview i believe is your opportunity to show that you are future ready that's what it is your virtual interview is your how you deliver it is a statement of how tech friendly you are and this could be a very important parameter for many jobs today uh maybe it wasn't 2 years ago but it will be now in the post covid world understand that when it comes to making an impact through a virtual interview small efforts will give you big returns let's say you want to put, put a, a, a zoom background you want to use a zoom background and if you have a green screen and just one single light on the green screen your uh, image will appear way better than without a green screen and a green screen costs less than 10 dollars or 500 600 rupees here in india uh, you know and you know less than 10 dollars in many other parts of the world it's it's a small investment 
that is going to give you a big return. Let's say buying a lapel mic, there, there are so many options available under 1,000 rupees in India and under 20, 30, 50 dollars in other parts of the world. Uh, using a lapel mic connected to your laptop is going to really improve the quality of your sound. Sometimes you even have the tools available already. If you have a decent headphones, pair of headphones with a built-in mic, they have some of some of these headphones have very good mics available or even AirPods if you if you have access to those uh, are great tools um, in terms of improving your sound quality. So all I'm trying to say to you is uh, small efforts will give you big returns as far as um, the final outcome is concerned. When it comes to embracing technology and getting ready for a VUCA world, design your own curriculum. Find out what is happening in my field. What are the new skills that might be required that I don't know about at the moment? Where can I learn them from? Which online um, resources shall I put together to design my own curriculum? And you know, can I stick to that learning regime religiously? So designing your own curriculum so that you're learning side by side. So learning is not something that happens when required. It's a way of life. Those are the people who will truly succeed in this new environment. In closing, my friends, this is what I'd like to say this to you. When it comes to a virtual interview, there are no right or wrong answers. Take this pressure off your shoulders. There's no right or wrong answer. Let's take, take for example, one of the most frequently asked questions. Tell us about yourself. There cannot be a right or wrong answer, right? There are your answers, and that's what matters. Are your answers honed, tuned, uh, enriched, engaging, and informative. And that's, that's the question you need to ask yourself. So there's no right or wrong answers. They are your answers. Are your answers? Um, do you, have you put sufficient uh, effort in, in preparing your answers? That's the question you should ask instead of asking, did I give the right answer or not? Okay. Number two, don't take rejections personally. The Indian School of Business Hyderabad uh, rejected my MBA application many years ago. I didn't take it personally. I went out and I created a video which is called Thank You ISB for Rejecting Me. <laughs> it's quite a story. I suggest you go watch it. It's interesting. And um, I don't take it personally. Uh, you shouldn't either. It's You're not being rejected. It's just didn't have to work out that way, right? So it's not a evaluation of your self-worth. Don't take rejections personally. The next thing I want you to keep in mind is a positive mindset is a huge strategic advantage these days. The times that we're currently living in, if you're someone with a positive, sunny, pleasant disposition, that in itself is a huge competitive advantage over others. So protect it, nurture it, develop it by all means. The next one, use every interview as a learning experience. Okay, After you finish, just log off. Meditate for a while, take a few deep breaths in, take a pen and paper and write down, if I were to do this again, what would I like to improve? Not in terms of beating yourself up over what I said or what I should have said. No, 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 that's not the point. Um, what are the maybe systems, processes and procedures that I could improve in order to have a better outcome? Outcomes are outcomes of input, right? So if you improve the input uh, religiously and constantly, you will definitely have better outcomes. So that's what you need to keep in mind. And uh, in the end, just two very important things. Remember, as they say in NLP, NLP training, one of the found foundation principles is this, there are no failures, there's only feedback. There are no failures, there's only feedback. That's a very empowering way to look at life. There are no failures, there's only feedback. Feedback to get better in the future. And breathe and smile and be yourself. And go out and conquer this bold new world full of possibilities. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.